Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Another solo stream tonight, as I will be having another guest appearance on the Hyped on Crypto uh, live stream. So, I can't leave you off with nothing. And plus, I need to get some fucking dildo talk out anyways. <laughs> so back on over here, we have the daily. I left you off yesterday when we were, when we were uh, destroying, just absolutely uh, pulverizing and violating this hashtag me too yellow line right here. The 21 exponential coming in around 65.33 uh, on Finex. And we close below it. We close below it on decent volume. So this to me is, um, well, I, I don't want to call it a chained behavior because uh, because really when we're if we're talking about you know a more macro scale cycle, we haven't seen a change of behavior since well, essentially right over here. But um, but we do have a violation of the twenty one exponential. So again, uh, a few days ago, I was thinking that. You know, once we based on the 21 exponential over here and had that first up thrust, we wanted to see continuation from there um, pretty much, I don't want to say immediately, but it, it you want it to happen very, very soon right after that first thrust. As again, we did have a major uh, resistance trend line coming right around here, around 67, uh, what do you want to call it, 69, just a good number. Anyways, um, since then we got rejected, so that was your non-chained behavior. We're still in a downtrend, not making higher highs essentially. I mean, it's just, at the end of the day, <laughs> if you want to make it simple for yourself, it's as simple as that. Anyways, um, so going back on over here, yeah, we are kind of basing around this lower support trend line that we've been talking about around 6,300. 6,300 is not only important just for this as a static support trend line, but all of the Twitter heroes and the TradingView pros and, and all the people you hear on YouTube, you know, calling for upside every goddamn day, um, are, are looking for some sort of a uh, inverted head and shoulders here. And while I already do have some apprehensions about this, which I will share in just a second, um, if it were to be true, then this then this area needs to hold right here as you cannot have a right shoulder that is lower than your left shoulder now so far on finex it actually does look it would look acceptable it would look okay but talking about some sort of um apprehensions of, uh with with this pattern right now i want to kind of bring your attention over here to uh to the yen Jap the, the japanese yen and over here on the yen you can see that we don't quite have the same sort of formation when i do have an inverted head and shoulders i want to there there are a few different um uh, you know characteristics that I need to see in order for in order for myself to believe in it You know like believe in God um, and back on over here. We see first things first the volume characteristics are wrong We have high volume uh, over here in the middle don't want to see that we also don't really have a defined neckline I'm sure a lot of people are saying crown what the fuck we have a defined neckline right here You have it you already have it in there and you know in, in a way I do and maybe and maybe you could make the argument for this I mean of course nothing's ever like picture perfect, right, but we do I mean uh, in in traditional senses, I do want to have or I don't want to have any sort of uh, sloping trend line going downwards here. That just kind of indicates the wrong sort of pressure that you want to see in this sort of pattern. Because again, in inverted head and shoulders, it's not just you know, <laughs> I'm going to destroy some dreams over here. But it's not just it's it's not just like going on Investopedia and looking at oh the inverted head and shoulders pattern. It's a it, it's a bullish reversal pattern, and you just have a have a shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder, and then you go up. You know, it's it's there. There's a psychology behind it, and the psychology is we want it's essentially accumulation and a loss of momentum with the sellers. Do we see that? Well, let's go over here to maybe like the eight hour. And do we have any sort of indication of that given our um, given our oscillators? Um, mm, not quite, not quite. We are we are losing momentum on the lows over here between these two points. However, we actually aren't even we aren't even creating. We're, we're only creating divergence between this point and this point. All these other points are higher lows. Um, so again, not really much to say to see over there. You do have your stochastics kind of turning back up again and getting out of that uh, critical zone. So I do like that. So that's a that's kind of a point in the bulls. And uh, and your RSI is hovering around this or hovering below the neutral zone once again. So a little bit um, a little bit a uh, little bit mixed signals right here. So again, whenever I see a pattern like this, I, I want it to be very visually apparent. I want it to be kind of like an in-your-face, hey, shut the fuck up and get long type thing. However. However, we don't have that. So when when, when I don't feel 100% confident, I really don't want to be entering any sort of trade like this uh, prematurely, uh, prematurely ejaculations over here. Anyways, going back on over here, um, really, e e even with that said, there's no way that I go long in this to begin with. I, I mean, unless you unless you watch my early uh, my earlier morning stream, if uh, unless we got above this area right here, the neckline, if you if you would, because it is very visually apparent over here on Finex. 
So if we were to start closing uh, two hour, four hour, eight hour dildos above here, it'd look okay. And uh, and yes, we can make a measure move on it, and that would take us, you know, it, or it's, it'd be kind of implying that we have some sort of a move coming towards this uh, 7700 area. Again, just this former um, resistance trend line going around here that we already have in there uh, from this uh, former bear flag that we put in on over here. But again, I believe that even if we did see this play out to the upside, there's a big problem with it. And that problem being is that as long as we're below this area right here, as long as we're below this area right here the, that we broke down um, on June 10th, I do identify this as you know a, a longer term bearish market. And even when you do, or you, you might notice that sometimes you do get a bullish break of your bearish patterns, but a lot of the times when it's in you know a bearish market cycle, those patterns, they'll get the initial break and then they'll get sold into. I believe we saw an example somewhere over here when we were actually trying to hold onto this, which we weren't quite, we, were, we actually weren't quite in this change behavior. Uh, if you want to call it a bear market, we can call it a bear market. If, if you want to get really spe spe uh, specific, it actually technically wouldn't be called one. Uh, we'll kind of go over that later maybe. Uh, but again, we have a change behavior over here and uh, we, we don't really have anything kind of taking us uh, from there. Essentially just <laughs> no higher highs to be found. Okay, so going back on over here, going back on over here. That's why this area right here, the 6,300 area is so goddamn important. As long as we're holding on to it, you're going to hear all the meme traders uh, talking about this inverted head and shoulders and how we're reversing the whole goddamn thing. And it's possible. It's possible. But I want to be extremely clear about this. You know, there, in my opinion, there's no need to be overly aggressive here. The trend is your friend and the trend is quite literally, you know, telling you a lot of things here that as long as we're below this 21 exponential on the daily dildo time frame, uh, I really don't want to be any, <laughs> anything called aggressively long. And to even further that point, it's not really until we had, we'd actually trade above this area right here, and that would be a short-term change of behavior, and perhaps even and that could put, potentially lead to a long-term change of behavior. So again, I want to kind of you know dial all of the enthusiasm back uh, with all the people you know kind of spouting out about this uh, about this good old head and shoulder or inverse head and shoulders over here. Because because a lot of things need to happen in order for this sort of thing to be um, confirmed. And again, this is why you know I'm a confirmation trader. I don't want to be caught in some sort of a little trap like this because you'd imagine that going over here onto the uh, longs chart, a lot of, we can see over here that a lot of people are getting long right around um, uh, the sixth. Sorry, the sixth of uh, or sorry, <laughs> I'm on American over here. Uh, the seventh, no, the sixth of Ju of July. The sixth, the sixth of July. Let's go figure out what what time exactly, and that would be 1700 my time. Okay, so seven six 1700. Let's go find out where their average price was. Well, it would be somewhere, somewhere right around here. Uh, so I think it was 1900 or 1700, somewhere right around here. Anyways, you know, regardless, it's it's obviously much higher. So those people are already underwater, and you'd imagine that what they're looking for over here is they're probably they're probably prematurely going for this uh, going for this inverse head and shoulders. Think that was going to break out right here, which is what I thought was going to happen. If if it was going to be confirmed, it was likely to happen on on this try or this try. However, breaking down from there, that actually to me looks like a liquidity pool play, and uh, and really just big accounts getting their shorts filled. Can I? be wrong on that absolutely absolutely but again we do have the markers of that and especially you know increasing volume onto the downside over here uh is certainly not um characteristics of uh of of accumulation um so again i'm looking at this over here and uh, and that's a little bit that that is a little bit um concerning and you'd imagine that if you were the kind of person getting long right here uh, getting long right here looking for this inverted head and shoulders and again we're making assumptions here but I, I but I believe this is a fair assumption to be to be making then you'd probably be looking for some sort of a stop loss below the low of this dildo right here sorry the dildo close I should say right around 6300 I mean yes it's you know technically it's uh it's a few ticks under there but um but all good is all good so again, I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of people have stop losses uh, right under here. And uh, and if we were to lose this support, not only would it destroy that narrative, but it would start to hit some liquidity on the downside, forcing some people out of their positions. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of breakout traders like myself, uh, not, not that I consider myself a breakout trader. I think that's kind of an interesting term. And most of the time when I meet quote unquote breakout traders, good old Dr. Evil over there, um, <laughs> they don't last too long. Anyways, <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. I'm not trying to call anyone out. Um, um, <laughs> so mean crown why are you so arrogant god damn it i need to dial it back sorry about that guys please feel free to call me out i am being indeed too much of an asshole right now anyways 
going back on over here. Ooh, we are selling right now. Holy moly, this red dildo is getting uh, solid and thick and tight and very girthy. Open up your bullish butthole and receive further ramming. Anyways, um, you'd imagine that a lot of people do have stop losses right below here. So that's going to create some sort of a cascade effect if we do confirm below here. So again, not so I want to be very clear about this. I'm not bullish, but I'm also not super bearish at the current moment in time. Because, in my opinion, it's not until we break either, and I'm just going to take off my little drawing tools over here. It's not until we break this area right here, or this area right here, until we have like an actual move. Now, yes, um, I am in a little bit of a cash position right now, maybe small net short if you wanted to really, you know, tally up the numbers, number, num number by number. Um, but I'm, I really just don't want to have a position right now because uh, if we break to the downside, I'm happy with entering a short down here. If we break up to the upside, uh, I'd probably enter in a little bit of a small long. If we took, if we closed the dildo above this yellow line, the 21 exponential right here, and uh, and then maybe I join in on the, f I believe that you actually kind of do have to take a little bit of a defensive position in like a, in the form of a long, which you don't typically hear, um, right around here. Um, around if we were to if we were to confirm ourselves with like a two hour dildo close above 67 69 um, again in my opinion nothing changes from the macro cycle view until we actually trade above this area right here just to quickly talk about why well let's get on the let's get out the good old the good old rectangle or, I'm sorry not a rectangle I don't know my geometry apparently a triangle yes a good old triangle so just kind of uh, talk, uh, oops, definitely need that on. Sorry about that. Just talk about this for a second. You know, we did have just kind of recap. I know I've done this a million goddamn times, but it's good. It's, it's good for, uh, it's good for continuosity, if that's even a word. So going on over here, we had about a three year bull run st uh, sparked off in late 2015, I believe. Then we, you know, we have all of the good human emotions of uh, fear of missing out, greed, exuberant irrationality, and reversal and wrecked. Um, <laughs> maybe not so much. Well, Hopefully not for you. Um, and then after that, we went into a period. So so after we went into the reversal phase, you enter a consolidation phase. The consolidation phase is marked by this green area right here as we tightened up this range between 6,000 and 12,000. The range getting, you know, tighter and tighter and tighter, just, you know, winding up like a core screw. And this is quite the big effect right here. Or sorry, cause I should say, if we're thinking in Wyckoff terms. So again, um, once we once we actually had this consolidation phase, we technically had equal chance to break up up as we did down. You know, by by standard definitions. However, if you've been listening to these streams for quite some time, you know that I had a lot of reservations about that. Or or sorry, not not reservations about it, but you. I think you probably could read through the lines that I was uh, majorly bearish uh, <laughs> ever since I probably started this stream. So fair enough, not to, uh, not to be all Mr. Arrogant over here, but again, I want you, you know, I want, it's not that I want to like say, hey, I did it, I'm right, I'm, I'm the best. No, I wanna show you how I did it so that you can go do it yourself. Um, and essentially, you know, we had a lot of signs going on in here, but but the big one being a lot of a distribution going on in this area right here, in this area right here. And to me, that was more um, more powerful. And we had a much more aggressive sloping downwards um, sell, uh, selling action right here. Um, to kind of contend the, the the these weaker bounces over here, so that to me was pretty damn bearish. Just looking at that alone. Now, sure, you can find a couple other examples, but again, you know, this period of consolidation also marked off by this uh, falling off or this very orderly fall off in volume right here. And when we actually break this this uh, this consolidation area, what do you see? A massive red dildo on their first big volume spike in you know months, really. And then so we see some follow through on top of that. Sorry about this. I just have a random line kind of sticking through there. Well, it's not quite random, but uh, but maybe we can talk about that later. All right. So going back on over here, uh, that to me, once we broke down this area right here, that we have another change of behavior. So again, just to recap, you know, bull run right here, reversal phase, consolidation phase, break it out to the downside, resolving this um, this consolidation phase to the downside. That to me is telling me that we're probably mo going much lower. Now, yes, if we were to break this neckline right here, it could reverse the market cycle. It, it very well could. But, it, but again, until it actually crawls back into this area right here, no change of behavior has been found from a macro mar market uh, cycle perspective. And to me, that is, um, you know, you just go with the trend at that point. The trend is your friend, as they say. So again, going over here, I want to I want to briefly go over the monthly as uh, as I didn't do this yesterday, and this is one of the reasons why I just I have a very difficult time being um, bullish anytime soon. And the monthly to me is a little bit more of a clearer picture. And I believe that when you do kind of consolidate price price action in in blocks of 30 days, it becomes more visually apparent. And I don't think it takes a fucking rocket science to see um, that that we have you know essentially 
we have broken this consolidation phase to the downside and we have plenty of room to go down uh, from a monthly perspective we have strong support i mean we have a little bit of support right around here you know 4300 which again yes i do have a measure move taking us somewhere right around there we can we can go over that pretty soon um but actually from and i'm not saying that this is going to happen you know very 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 clearly i'm not saying that this is going to happen but if i am looking at the monthly here it is suggesting that strong support is actually really around here, around 1,300 or 1,100. And our, and our man in the in the Discord, uh, Jen Pilato, has been calling that out for quite some time. And you know what? It, when you look at the monthly, it does make sense. So again, if you're not in the Discord, definitely check it out. It's a beautiful place. A lot of very, 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 very um, highly uh, skilled traders, as well as some newer people as well. But they're the kind of people that you want to be around because everyone's trying to learn. It's a great environment. Really, really good group thing going on. I absolutely fucking love it. It's one of the things that I'm most proud of, that, that, that this place has really attracted that sort of level of uh of thinking so again going off the monthly right here um the way that i look at this is maybe not the way that most people would look at this most people might look at this and say hey we just tested the 21 exponential right here for the first time well i actually don't look at it like that i kind of i kind of look at this first uh down dildo right here after your tweezer top dildo formation right here reversal formation right here i should say um as a test of your 21 exponential and then we kind of consolidated along it and then now we're testing it again so the more the kind of the general rule of thumb is the more you test support the more you um the weaker it gets you know again a psychology behind that because if someone is defending that support which you know a lot of a lot of the times algorithms and bots are just statistically or not or statically you know designed and programmed to kind of respect these levels um based off that based off their inputs um you'd imagine that they're going to run out of ammo over time or you know they might figure oh we'll just step aside if there is this much sell pressure i might as well just step aside maybe even uh, may maybe even join on the sell side as well um, again, that's a little bit more of a nuanced conversation and I'm probably getting way too deep into what I need to cover right now. So again, uh, the way that I look at this is that we are getting weaker along this area right here. Could we have a bounce and kind of come back up? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. But here's the thing from the monthly dildo perspective, uh, we can go all the way up to the high of this dildo right here at 77.90 and not do, and quite literally not do anything. Um, now, yes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite say that myself. Um, but that is what the monthly is suggesting and the monthly doesn't go bullish i mean i mean do i want to say that the monthly doesn't go bullish well the monthly doesn't really do anything crazy until we actually get above this area right here this 12,000 area which again if we go down to the daily you can uh, i think you can very quickly see why oh let's go over here to finex and uh, whoops, let's just take everything off. You can see this 12,000 area was this major, major uh, liquidity run, um, you know, stop hunt, whatever you want to call it, institutional order flow, all these works, all these words kind of define the same things. Um, area right here, which is kind of, in my opinion, the um, like the ceiling, if you will, maybe that's not the right term, but essentially as long as we're living below there, uh, I really don't see any sort of like, you know, moonshot coming in. So again, I know that that's a little bit, that might be a little bit, um, a little bit uh, 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 disappointing to hear, but of course, you know, there there will be signs before that that we are reversing, but that's just like the one that says, um, hey, you know, we're actually going back into a full on bullish macro cycle. Um, you know, by 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 all by all measurements. Uh, so yeah, again, a little bit more of an off kilter uh, thing right there, and I should probably explain that a little bit better. But I'm running out of time here, as I do need to uh, do need to finish my food. All right, so going back on over here, uh, let's just talk about the why this area is so important right here. Okay, so let me just get rid of my uh, triangle right here. Get out of there. I hate green, anyways. Um, all right, so right here, we put in a bear flag right here. And as you can see, this bottom support of this bear flag was broken, quite obviously, with this very girthy red dildo right here. But, you know, as the saying goes, former support turns into resistance. And we see that verified with the, with the next three touches at, if we extend this trend line going up here. So again, as long as we're respecting this bottom uh, support trend line as resistance, then this this area is valid. Now, why is that important? Well, if we kind of pull it out, when in doubt, pull it out, um, and uh, and look at this area over here, you can very quickly see. Oh, what's this? We have an inverted cup and handle. Oh my God! Another another good old Investopedia uh, trick of the trade, um, as they say. But actually, this does work. And um, and yes, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, "Crown, what the fuck? That is a messed up cup, man. You can't just do that. How are you gonna drink water out of there?" Well. You can still fucking drink water out there, okay? It's not about water, man. It's about dildos. So the way that I look at this is that 
as long as we're respecting this area right here, this does look like a major inverted cup and handle. And guess what? We can make a measure move based off that. And where would that, where would that kind of put us uh, in the realm of? Well, you already know where I'm going with this probably. Oh, the blue box, the blue box of, uh, of blue waffles. Don't look that up on Google. Um, so again, you know, this blue box over here is quite, uh, is quite important from a, from, from a long-term perspective as not only is it lining up with this major uh, support trend line over here where, you know, a, a significant amount of volume was done in the past. I mean, not not crazy by any means, but it is an area of interest. And uh, you have your 886 Fibonacci retracement over here. Again, your 886 Fibonacci number is not going to come up on your um, on your uh, default. You have to put that one in yourself. But you know what? We also have some interesting stuff going on over here. Okay, Bitstamp, the longest running exchange. Blah 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 blah. And if we look at the 2014 scenario. Guess what? Where did we bottom out at? Well, I took a Fibonacci retracement from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the 2013 market cycle, and we came up with uh, the 886 as the ultimate low, and we accumulated between the 786 and the 886. And once we actually broke back through the 886, or sorry, the 786 right here, that's when the bull market really did, you know, by all measurements happen. So that was your accumulation zone. So you'd imagine that would kind of suggest an area between this. Um, uh, what is this 2500 and about uh, 4150 so again big range um, do we have anything else pointing there actually we do if we put on <laughs> if we put on our regular movement averages which I typically don't really care about but they're gonna they're confirming what what I'm saying over here so I like it when when it, when it does what I want hey what's going on over here oh get out of here titty sequential and uh, put these back on and let's see okay where, where where'd you go uh, come on uh, there you are, you triple simples. Okay, uh, this this red line right here is your 200 re uh, simple moving average. You know, again, um, the simple the 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 200, the 100 are are pretty much things that everyone's kind of looking at. Bots are always you know programmed to respect these things um, just based off their nature. And you can imagine that if we did start to really make our way down here, well, guess what? This red this this red moving average would start to kind of curl up or sorry curl you know flat and likely uh, meet somewhere in this blue box. Of of, uh, of doom over here. So again, that is quite interesting to myself. And, um, and yeah, again, another, another thing just kind of pointing that direction. What else was I going to speak about? I know that there's one other thing that I wanted to cover before I ended this video, as I am running out of, out of a little bit of time over here. Yes, we also do have the 200 exponential coming in around, uh, you know, you'd imagine it would start to kind of curl around this area right here, 4150 ish on this, uh, on this horizontal support. Um, and that would be that, that would actually be what I'm looking at is if we did, um, if we did negate this pattern right here and, um, and then, well, we'd still have this inverted cup and handle right here. And you can just, well, <laughs> you can just, you can just take my word that, that we end up somewhere right around there. It's also a Fibonacci retracement, the 786. And it's also, um, and it's also a horizontal support line trend line as well. So again, oh, that's right. What, did, what else do I want to cover? This right here. Okay. Let's take everything off. Get naked, everyone. Just kidding. Just get, just get Bitcoin naked. It's had too much tequila. Um, over here. So we got, uh, the cyan line right here. This is your 100 exponential, your purple line right here. That's your 200 exponential. And, uh, uh, and when they cross over, you know, again, it's not it's not that it's some sort of wizardry that that makes this price action happen, but it's kind of telling you what the bots are likely doing um, and how they're programmed and that they're getting a little bit more aggressive on their sell programs. And what happens after that? Well, we have a big a big dump in price action consolidation and test the 21 exponential right here. Dump again a little bit lower, make a new low, and then pump back up above the 21, and then sell and then kind of get near the 55, and then sell back down. Okay, we only have one other example of this in Bitcoin's almost 10 year history. All right, you already know where I'm going with this one. So going on back over here, where could it be? Oh, I wonder. Is it going to be 2015? No, it's going to be 2014. All right. Here is your only other example of uh, of that of that happening in price action history in Bitcoin, and we have the cross going on right here. You can call it a devastation cross, you can call it a wrecked cross, you can call it whatever the fuck you want, but essentially we have a very similar behavior. Again, not one to one because because historical analysis is not like that, but we can kind of use these exponentials to gauge you know where we likely are within this sort of market um, market symmetry scenario. All right, so so we have the cross right here, big dump in price action, consolidation, test of 21, dump again to a new low. Obviously, it was much more aggressive right here, but we have a pump back up above the 21, almost tested 55, fall on back over, 
and then you know find some sort of a support right here I'd, I'm guessing this would kind of match up with about 6,000 and then put in the bull trap of fucking doom right here only all the way to the to the 200 exponential just to get rejected and go down to your ultimate low right here so again I just want to point that out as this possible scenario that could happen is that what I think is is that what I think is gonna happen one to one I have absolutely no idea there's no way to know that this is this is technical analysis not witchcraft and wizardry I do not have a crystal ball unfortunately um, <laughs> despite what other analysts might tell you um, so again I'm just I'm just kind of pointing out possible scenarios and kind of what I'd be looking for on their triggers so as long as we're kind of uh, you know following along with that area right there I do want to watch out for any sort of a major bull trap um, you know coming into Bitcoin's uh, history as that would be quite nasty indeed we do have the G20 meeting meeting which I was wrong about I thought it was gonna happen today I was wrong about that I believe it's Friday or I mean check me on that I just know it's very soon again I know that's not very you know professional but you know what fuck it <laughs> fuck the G20 okay just kidding I don't I don't want to fuck the G20 um, they're probably all men and old anyways <laughs> what does that have to do with anything god damn it crown sorry about that anyways um, so again, that will be an event that will be one of those things where people uh, probably do play the event. Uh, if we rally into the, that event, well, that's going to say that expectations are high. Expectations are for something good. And uh, and if we kind of fall into that event, which kind of looks like we're doing right now, um, if they say anything remotely remotely nice, uh, then we'll probably have a nice a nice little rally going on. So again, keep an eye out for that because that will be uh, that will be certainly um, very very big in my opinion. Also, we've we've been hearing stuff about ETFs. Everyone's talking about a goddamn ETF nowadays. Uh, we've been hearing about this for quite some time, and I do believe that Bitcoin will have ETFs at some point in time. But uh, but hey, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I feel like people just heard Arthur Haynes of uh, the CEO of Bitmex say that on CNBC, like Africa or some shit like that, uh, that Bitcoin's going to fifty thousand because we're getting ETFs uh, this year. You know, I don't know about that quite yet. Now the C Bo did um, did uh, apply for an ETF on on Bitcoin um, the other day. It, we I, th I believe we will have resolution on that early August. Um, so again, you know, uh, same sort of logic there. If people are kind of buying the rumor, buying the event, buying perhaps you know what whatever expectation that they might have, if 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 it anyway if it if it in any way negates that expectation, probably sell off. And if we kind of fall into that, then you know if if they have good news, then we'll probably go up. I know that that's not profound to say, but again, keep in mind what kind of price action that we have leading into those into those sorts of dates. Because if they say anything that's even remotely expectation breaking, then uh, then then like. Likely the opposite does indeed happen. So again, you know, just just a little human emotions, human psychology type thing, is that human emo human uh, expectations or just expectations in general can really only be broken. I know that sounds a little bit dire and uh, and uh, desperate. Maybe is that the right word? Um, despair, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, you know, think about it with yourself. Maybe you've I don't know had expectations with a girl before, maybe with a guy or, or whatever it might be. You know, we don't judge here. Who gives a fuck about that? Uh, why am I keep? Why do I keep on talking about this? Obviously, some sort of a Freudian slip. Uh, <laughs> stupid crown anyways um, you know if you have like expectations in some way then usually it, we, it leads to sort of weird sort of behaviors and then what happens after that when the expectations are are are, are kind of destroyed because they were already created on perhaps false pretenses then well the uh, then you have a an emotional an emotional uh, reaction to that we'll just put it that way so again that's gonna do it for today again I really don't see any reason to be to be aggressive or un or <laughs> just aggressive uh, to the downside or to the upside right here if we if we break above here 6750 then I think you know I, th I think a defensive long is probably is probably a good position or at least what I'll be doing of course none of this financial advice blah 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 I'm not a financial advisor nor do I claim to be go fuck yourself SEC but um, but you know I, I I would be taking a, uh, a defensive long around here and then I'd probably be getting out of it somewhere right around here and may maybe putting on a short right there but as we saw in 2014 we did get all the way back to the 200 exponential if we are going to do some sort of crazy bull trap like that and by the same token as long as we're living above 6300 I really don't want to be too aggressively short I'm a little bit net short right now but don't take that as you know any sort of indication I'm just kind of uh, I just want a cash position essentially as I am on bitmex and um, 
and and of course you know if we did break this area right here you do have this next support around 60 40 that would be kind of that last line of uh, of support that we if we were doing the 2014 scenario kind of get down to um perhaps it's right here again i'm just you know i'm just kind of offering up ideas but uh but hey you know the big point here is that if we were to break this area if we were to break 60 40 that is my more doomsday scenario where i say okay it's very likely that we play out that more bear scenario of about you know going down to that to the blue box of doom um and uh and, and we probably don't see six thousand for quite some time after that so again um right now is kind of like just in a little bit of an awareness phase i think there's plenty of uh, plenty of opportunity to be had with just a little bit of patience <laughs> just like just like every fucking day you're probably gonna with just a little bit of patience you're probably gonna you're probably gonna have a very good day so again i'm waiting for signals right here i really don't want to be um forcing my opinion on the market one way or the other uh, or the other yes i do lean to the downside but hey i can always be wrong on that so that's why i'm kind of sitting back and waiting for confidence all right, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Oh, before I go, before I go, by the by, I do want to remind, remind everyone, the technical analysis program is going up in price on July 15th. So I believe that's it's the 11th today. So that's in four days. Um, and of course, you can't have a price increase without more content. So there will be a, um, a, new, a new discussion channel within our current Discord for the people who are, in, who are in that program to kind of congregate and discuss these specific strategies related to that program with each other and kind of bounce ideas off each other. Of course, I'll be there as well, participating as well. It'll kind of be a great venue for me to kind of... Um, you know, offer up my sort of ideas, maybe offer up some, some sort of uh, clarification on anything in, with, with, uh, with relation to the program and also talk about my own trading activities as well. So again, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you guys. Um, I'll be back on tomorrow and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care.